Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite movies. I think it's probably one of the most played movies on cable television ever. I feel like if you're swimming the channels and have nothing else to do, if you go through TBS or TNT, it will be on, on just about any given day. But there's that moment, and it comes two or three times in the story, where Andy Dufresne, who is unjustly accused of killing his wife, makes a choice and says, I need to either get busy living or get busy dying. And his equation's pretty straightforward. Either I'm going to go ahead and, even though I'm stuck in prison, work on living. And of course, as we find out at the end, spoiler alert, uh, trying to break out of jail. Um, or I can just give up and die inside. He has a very clear idea, like a lot of us do, that living means to fight. Living means to push. Living means to do all that you can to make things right while dying is to give up or to quit. It happens over and over again. We hear it and see it in more ways than we can count. There is that great poem, Do Not Go Sweetly Into That Great Night Rage, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. We can probably go on for hours with those examples that living is to fight the good fight while dying is just to quit and to give up. The only problem is, as Christians, that's not at all how Jesus presents the equation. In fact, Jesus, like most of the times he talks about things, turns it all upside down, shakes it up, and then leaves us with a big mess that we're not sure how to put back together. I find it fascinating. There are two things Jesus talks about more than anything else in Scripture. One is money, and priests really only tend to do that in the fall when we're looking for stewardship. We don't <laughs> reference that as much as we probably should because Jesus is very clear that our relationship with money is also related to how we treat other people and how we treat God. So Jesus talks a lot about money and God's economy versus our economy. The other thing he talks about a ton is his own death. It's not in terms of, I'm going to quit and give up next week. It's, there's a reason, and there's a cause, and we should do it. I think most priests don't talk about death because, well, it's just a downer, and it's sad, and we don't want to talk about death. But today, we're going to try and talk about it. Now, I should start by really saying Christ's death is ultimately, if we're truly honest, an utter mystery. For 2,000 years, the church has been trying to wrap its head around why Jesus died, and we are no closer today than we were 2,000 years ago. In fact, we have lots of theories about why Jesus was born, the miracles he did, all these other ideas, but the church has no fewer than seven theories of why Jesus dies on the cross. There's a whole discipline named soteriology where theologians fight and bicker about all of these ideas. So as I and jump into these waters, I know it's a lot deeper water than I can probably swim. And don't worry, we're not going to go that deep. But it is to name that the death of Christ is a mystery to us. It doesn't make complete sense because after all, in our world, it works easily, right? The victor vanquishes the defeated and the defeated either dies or has to walk off the field of battle. That's our economy. That's how we work in this world, right? The winner gets to tell the story and tell us how the other guy was wrong and you were proved he was wrong because we killed him or we pushed him out or we burned him at the stake. Jesus has a different way of looking at it. For that matter, the Gospel of John really does. And today is one of those classic Johannine readings, that is John reading from the Gospel of John, that makes people nervous because it's a little bit crazy. People go to see Jesus and they say, hey, where's Jesus? And he says, uh, I'm over here, but I'm getting ready to leave. I'm done. And you're sort of like, what? <laughs> this is a really weird thing. Like, hey, your fans are here to see you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to go die. Um, it's a really weird response to anyone in that situation. And yet Jesus says, not that I'm going to go die necessarily, but I go to be glorified. And this is one of the key themes in the Gospel of John that just makes no sense on, to us on so many levels. This is the moment, not Easter, but Good Friday is the moment when God glorifies Jesus. 
It is Good Friday with Jesus on the cross, tortured and dying, where he goes, this is God's proudest moment. What? It's bizarre. It's everything counter to what we understand and know, because after all, the person who dies on the cross was a convict, was one who opposed Rome, was one who was being publicly humiliated, was one who was being mocked, who literally in the laws of Moses, it said, if one dies on the tree, he is outside the covenant. Everything about Jesus says he is a loser to be on that cross. And yet God says, oh, that's my glory. That is the moment of glory. When God will draw himself to the world and the world will be drawn near. I don't have a perfect explanation, but I have one that for me at least helps understand some of what's going on. And it was actually described by a psychologist talking about something a little different, and that's okay. We can pull in from different areas. And he used a simple example. He, to his class, he turned and said, what is this? And so I'll ask you, what is this? It's not a question. An orange? No. It's, an, it's probably a tangerine, but we'll go with an orange, right? Just, to, just for the sake of argument. It's fruit, it's an orange, all right? So here is an orange. What happens if we squeeze the orange? Juice comes out. What kind of juice? Orange juice. orange juice. Why did orange juice come out? Because it's an orange. No tricks. It's an orange. If you squeeze it, orange juice comes out because it's an orange. The psychologist then said to those gathered, what comes out of you when you get squeezed? <laughs> Uh, maybe. <laughs> Speaking metaphorically, but I like the answer anyway. <laughs> what comes out of us when we are squeezed? If we're honest, it's not always the best of us, the highest of us. When we get pressured and bad things start happening, we tend to, well, do that list of things I just listed. We get violent or angry or frustrated or yell or scream or do a wide variety of things. I, I would argue, and theologians have argued, that the moment of God's glory is on the cross because it reveals who God is without anything being asked in return. God reveals on the cross that he is absolutely not violent. He is absolutely not about revenge. He is absolutely not about hate. Instead, what are the words Jesus says on the cross? I forgive I love, I embrace. It is a symbol in the purest sense of God saying, who God is, is not someone who needs to be defended. God doesn't need weapons or war to prove that he's God. He is simply God and even more, God is absolutely love in that moment. Even in the worst of moments, what comes out of Christ is love. That is the moment of his glory when he draws the world because we realize it's something totally different than any of us would probably ever dream of doing in that situation. It's totally different than anything we can comprehend. And again, some 2,000 years later, we're still trying to wrap our heads around how, why it works. Christ says, this is my moment of glory. And God says, indeed, that is the moment of glory. When you draw the world to yourself in love, recognizing that, again, anger and hatred is all part of this world, but not part of who God is. As we begin next week to talk, walk through Holy Week, as we start with that triumphal entry and then march right through Good Friday, I invite you to reflect on why Jesus died. Maybe it's not the answer I gave. Maybe there's more to it in your mind than that. There probably is. But the hard part is to look and not turn away. The hard part is to actually walk that walk with Christ. The funny thing is we'll have mm, 2,000 people here on Easter Sunday. 
If we have 400 on Good Friday for all of our services, it's a small miracle. Because it's hard to look at the cross. It's hard to think about death. It's hard to imagine someone choosing to do this. And not in a way that's giving up, but in a way that they know to be the best way forward. To be a choice of life. To be a choice of revelation. To be a choice of God's glory. The only way I can make sense of it is to say that it's God showing God's love in the worst of situations. And in that worst of situations, to reject any idea of violence in the process. I invite you to pray on it, to reflect on it, to dream on it, to, to engage it. Because if you do, if you can come to terms on some level with that Good Friday, then Easter makes all that much more sense. Then suddenly you realize, well, God said yes to Jesus and ultimately says yes to us as well says yes to life and love. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this day and especially for the gift of your son. And even more than that, Lord, for the example he gives to us, an example of true peace, of true love and forgiveness, a forgiveness that passes all understanding. Help us, Lord, to draw near you this day And help us always, Lord, to draw near you on the cross. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.